is in flames This ain't the wire, but it's all in the game You know I always keep that Royal flood, royal, royal, royal flood Ayo, I got that Royal flood, royal, royal, royal flood What's up guys, I'm Landon from Shoewear and today we're putting LaMelo's first signature shoe with Puma and Trey's first signature shoe with Adidas head to head to see how they compare. So really quick, if this is your first time checking us out, feel free to drop a follow or subscribe wherever you're watching and give this video a like. We would greatly appreciate that. But just to hit on the box and the price really quick, Melo's shoe box is like one of the coolest that I've seen in a minute. So it's got that not from here text on the top. That's actually what the colorway name is for the shoe that we're checking out today. But it's also gonna have like a whole galaxy theme kind of covering the entire box you of course get a little see-through window where you can check out the shoes inside the box so i thought that was a really nice little touch there and then on the bottom they even throw on just a size conversion chart so just so many details just a lot going on for this box but switching it over to the trey young one you're just going to get a white box that has some text on there saying always remember when they doubted you with his signature underneath so you know not quite as much going on for these but like i said this is both players uh first signature shoe with their respective brands so the mellow ball ones are going to be retailing for $125 so that's pretty average but switching it over to the Trae Young ones those are a little bit higher at $140 which actually makes this shoe the most expensive or just more expensive than any other shoe with Adidas right now as far as like a signature line goes I think the Adidas uh, Harden Volume 5 is like the closest at $130 but you know still neither one of these shoes are going to break the bank all right, so taking a brief look at the appearance for these new models and starting off with the colorways, today we're checking out the Puma Mellow Ball one, not from here, versus the Adidas Trey Young one ice tray. So honestly, two really sweet designs in my opinion. For the Mellow Ball one, you know, just like the box, the details on this shoe is pretty crazy. So you're gonna get some one of one text show up on the tongue and it's also faintly on the inside of the upper and then it shows up on the outsole as well. And then just beneath the laces, you're gonna get that not from here text just like for the uh, colorway name. But the reason Lamelo signed with Puma is that he wanted to work with a brand that was gonna kind of allow him to be authentic. He kind of looks at himself as a unique, like a standout person. But what's really cool about him getting this first signature shoe with Puma is that that makes him one of only four athletes now that have ever had a signature shoe with Puma. And the others are like Walt Frazier, Ralph Sampson, and Vince Carter. And then now you got LaMelo Ball. So, I mean, that's really neat for him. But just as far as the design looks, you got kind of like a cool spider web design that runs around the ankle. That's that's kind of what I'm calling it. But the midsole's got kind of a weave pattern that's built into it. This is going to be a mid-top shoe because something about LaMelo is he actually doesn't like to play in low-top shoes, which, you know, I personally like to but that's why they made this a mid-top design. And then you're also gonna have like a uh, halo design with like those wings and a one running up the middle of the shoe. He actually has that tatted on his chest. And then the word rare shows up on the bottom of these and he has that tatted on his arm. So, you know, honestly, the details they put into this shoe are really sweet. I love the appearance for these and I feel about the same way for Trey's first shoe with Adidas. So this is that ice tray colorway. So I really do like the light blue that kind of covers this shoe. And then you're gonna get that icy polar bear on the back, which is a really nice touch. But if you get some time, go and check out our intro for uh, this shoe. Well, I guess actually check out both of them because we kind of have uh, some fun with those. We go all out, try and make them pretty interesting. Thing. But for Trey's shoe, you also have a really cool player logo. I do like that. You got some blue patches running over the laces that are nice. And then something about this design, though, you only get two lacing holes. So it's not super surprising since he did play in the next level line, which, you know, was just straight up no laces. So I'm not surprised. At least they threw something on there. But as you, if you look at the midsole for the final piece, you've got like three loops kind of running up it. And I kind of think it looks like the Trey Foil logo design. Not everyone agrees with that, but that's just kind of what it reminds me of. But, you know, as far as appearance go, these are two of my favorite shoes on the market right now. I mean, they both look really nice. All right, so for the back half of this review, I'll hit more on like the materials and the performance side for both of these shoes. So starting off with the cushioning, the LaMelo Ball one has a Puma Nitro Foam midsole, which, you know, is built for re superior responsiveness and comfort. And I have to say like, this is a crazy soft shoe. So I'm pretty sure it has the same setup as the Puma Fusion Nitro that we reviewed a few months back. But I mean, I gotta say, this is one of the better starts to a shoe line just based off of comfort alone. These require like little to no break in time. So I'm really impressed just with the overall cushion for this Mellow Ball one. It does remind me a little bit of how the PG5s felt to play in whenever I was testing those out for the first time. You know, a lot of the same things can be said, but 
Switching it over to the Trae Young one. I mean, honestly, the cushioning is like probably the selling point for this shoe. So you're going to get a traditional light strike midsole. It's going to be paired with some additional boost cushioning that's in kind of like a hockey puck form in the back half of that shoe. And, you know, that's just going to add to a soft feel. So part of why this shoe is a little bit more expensive at $140 is going to be this like combined cushioning setup. But I mean, I have to give it up to these shoes. I mean, the cushioning is really nice on both of them. So you have to like that whenever you're talking about a basketball shoe. So now looking at the materials and the support for the metal ball one, you're not really going to have any premium touches on this shoe, but now, you know, that's actually just because LaMelo doesn't really like that stuff. He kind of prefers like the textiles and stuff like that, which, you know, is going to be what covers up pretty much all of this upper. He stays away from all the suede touches, anything like that. But, you know, honestly, most lines kind of have gone away from that already. So it's really not a huge deal. This is going to be a mid top shoe, like I mentioned. So I'm not really used to playing in mids all that much, but it still feels great. You know, no problems with that. There's no outrigger on this shoe, but the material on the upper, you know, it's really well put together. It doesn't really give at all whenever you're making those moves. This is made out of a mono mesh upper, so that does keep this shoe lightweight. I'm definitely a huge fan of that, but you know, there's no added pieces on the Mellow Ball 1 to really help a ton with the support, but you know, maybe the midsole runs up the shoe a little bit, but that might help keep your foot in. There's still no issues with the lateral containment on these that I've noticed yet, but switching it over to the Trae Young 1, you actually do get some higher quality or like some premium touches for this shoe with that like suede like material that kind of makes up these blue patches around the toe, uh, around this toe box. You get it along the tongue, a little bit on the side as well. So you get a little bit higher quality stuff, but you know, some people like that, but it's just really not as common anymore. It's, a lot of lines have just kind of gone away with that altogether. But as for the rest of the shoe, it is just gonna get some textiles to make up to kind of fill in the uh, gaps there. But you know, as for this shoe for the support, there's only gonna be two eyelets, like I mentioned in the appearance section. So I feel like it could be a little bit better. You're also gonna have the tongue built directly into the upper. So, I mean, the lateral containment, it's just really not all that great. With the tongue being built into the upper, it gives you a little bit of a sock-like feel. You know, like I said, really similar to that next level design, but I mean, two laces, just the tongue built in, just not a great way to secure your foot down on these. So, I mean, it doesn't give you the most locked in feel. All right, so finishing it off with traction, it is a toss up between the cushioning and the traction on this Lamella Ball one for like what the highlight of the shoe is. So these have Puma's non-slip rubber compound that honestly could not describe these better. Like it's a super sticky shoe to play in just like the Puma Fusion Nitro. But you know, I did not like the support on the Fusion Nitros nearly as much as this Mellow Ball one. But these also have a rubber compound on here that's supposed to hold up really well for durability. So, I mean, we'll just kind of play that by ear, see how it is over time. Cause you know, I've only played in these a couple of times right now, but you know, even on a dusty court, these things still had grip. So you are gonna get a unique traction pattern setup. I just haven't really seen anything like it before. You get a little bit of a pivot point, like on the ball of your foot. That's what that little circle is. There to kind of help you like uh, aid you in 300, 360 degree movements, helping keep your foot on the ground. But the back half of the shoe gets a little bit of a Kyrie-esque pattern just for the outsole. But, you know, moving it on to the Trae Young ones, as impressed as I was for the LaMelo Ball ones, I'm equally as disappointed in these Trae Young ones for traction. So, I mean, it looks like the traction pattern for these was supposed to be one of the highlights of the shoe. And, you know, the more you play in them, you just have to accept that that really isn't the case. So you get that traditional herringbone set up in the front, which is normally great. A lot of lines use that. And you pair that with the radial design in the back, another really good traction pattern, and it just doesn't get the job done on this shoe. I mean, it's just super weird because like I said, two of the better traction designs, and they just don't really work on this Trey Young One model. Like. I find myself slipping way too much. These just don't have a sticky feel at all and definitely not close to the Mellow Ball ones. But, you know, as for sizing, both of these shoes are going to be true to size. You know, definitely keep in mind that for the Trae Young ones, you're going to have the tongue built directly into that upper. So that does make them a little bit tougher to get on. But, you know, once you're in the shoe, both of these are fit normal to size. So for the final ratings and starting off with the appearance, like I said, I love the look for both of these shoes. It's a really cool design to Lamelo's first ball, uh, first shoe with Puma. You know, I'm not really in love with the colorway, but you know, it's still really clean. But I also love the design for Trey's first shoe with Adidas. The details are really nice. And you know, I'm just gonna leave that section as a tie. There's not a clear way to lean, but moving on to cushioning, both of these shoes are super soft. 
you're going to get minimal break-in time if there's even any at all and there's just not a really super clear way to lean on that section either so we'll stay with the tie but as for the materials you know the extra touches that they give the Trey Young one are, are definitely nice like I said, LaMelo kept his shoe really simple, but he did do that on purpose. But with the higher retail price for the Adidas shoe with Trey Young at $140, I mean, you're going to be able to put some higher quality stuff in there. So I will lean that way for the materials. But as for the support, you know, I don't really love the two lace setup for the Trey Young one. It just doesn't give you a super secure feel. For the Metal Ball shoe, I just don't have anything uh, necessarily bad to say about the support. Even though there's nothing on there really geared to help the support, you at least get like a traditional lacing setup. Gives you a little extra lockdown. You know, the upper more than handles all of your lateral movements. So I'm going to give the support category to them. But to finish off with traction, I mean, it's really not close here. Adidas just swung and missed on the Trey Young one. Ones. like they look a lot better than they play just as far as like traction goes but the metal ones are just super sticky like one of the best pieces on this shoe for sure so that is going to lead to me going with the metal ball one to win this performance battle i mean there's just absolutely no downside to this shoe it's super soft it's breathable the traction is so nice and you know as for puma shoes like they have been top tier traction as you kind of look back at like the clyde all pro that i have up there in the corner and then like i mentioned the puma fusion night like you can just tell Puma has a good thing going as far as like traction is concerned right now but you know I like the details for the Trey Young one especially the cushioning but you know the traction just hasn't felt the best to play in for me personally and the support it's definitely not anything special but you know if they fix those two things you know this will look a lot different going forward. All right, so if you're interested in buying one or both of these shoes and you want to support our channel, we do have affiliate links in the description. That kind of helps take a little bit off the price whenever we buy these shoes to review them. So, you know, feel free to check that out if you want. But that does wrap up this performance comparison. Feel free to leave a comment below if you like this video or just letting us any other shoes that you want to see go head to head. But until next review, I'm Landon from Shoewear. Peace.